Let us pray. Our Father, we're asking that as we look into the pages of the scriptures now, you'll speak directly to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we're praying that you'll help us so that whatever it is you want us to do, you'll grant us the grace and the faith to be able to carry everything out. Amen. Bless us and use us as channels of blessings to help other people. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. In Matthew chapter 17, I'm reading verses 19, 20, and 21. Matthew chapter 17, verses 19, 20, and 21. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. How be it, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. This morning we're talking on the faith that conquers. And we're talking about the Christian work that we have to do. Jesus had called his own disciples and he called them so that they will do an important work of the kingdom. And part of the important work they were to do came out and faced them, but they couldn't do it. And they asked of this area of work they should have done, which they couldn't do, and which Jesus Christ did with ease. And eventually they asked the Lord Jesus Christ and said, why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. I want you to understand that what Jesus said applies to everything that God will have us to do in the Christian work. It's only that at this time, the part of the work they were to do was the casting out of the evil spirit, which they were not able to do. But it's like that for every area of work that God has committed into our hands. And God has told you what to do in the service of the Lord. And you see that you are failing. You are not able to do that thing. And you are asking yourself, why couldn't we? Whatever it is, why couldn't we? He's giving us this work to do. We didn't do it well. We couldn't succeed. Why couldn't we? He has chosen us to be missionaries for those who have gone on missionary work. They've gone, they have failed. They have come back in shame. And they're asking the question, why couldn't we? He sent people out to states so that they can plant the church. They've confronted the idol worshippers and the occultic people. They have not been able to plant the church. Oh, they said those are resistant people. And they come back with the question, why couldn't we? He sent out some people so that they could plant the church in a particular locality. And in that locality, it appears that there are Muslims there. And they couldn't really get through. And they begin to wonder because they've heard of other people that have planted the church in Muslim-dominated areas. And they come back and they say, why couldn't we? Or it is that God has chosen somebody to be a coordinator. And God has a purpose and, his, and a plan. And there is an area of work that has to be done. And it's just... It's not just being a figurehead, just being a coordinator. And if that coordinator fails, the coordinator begins to ask, why couldn't I? It may be that there are zonal leaders and God has set goals before them. Things that ought to be done, but it couldn't be done. Not because the resources were not there. Not because God made a mistake in calling them, but they have failed. And the questions they are asking will be, why couldn't we? Maybe you're an area leader. This morning, we'll be going through the area goals and strategy for success. 
and we have said, if you look at the outline, that as you reach out in the area, we're expecting that in the next few months, you'll be winning 90 souls to the Lord. And you win them in various ways. It's there on the outline. And then the newcomers class or the new converts class and the people that ought to be passed uh, from the world into the kingdom of God. If you fail, you'll be asking the question eventually, why couldn't we? As house fellowship leaders, there are things set before you, things that the Lord wants you to do, and you've tried already. And the question you must be asking yourself is that now you've taken the house fellowship for some time, and yet you find out you've not been succeeding. And the questions you have on mind is, why couldn't we? In your marriage, the Lord, while you are getting married, set before you something fantastic and something wonderful. And all those promises were given to you. And as people prayed for you and encouraged you and comforted you and gave you the scriptures, now one year had passed. Two years have passed after that marriage, and you, you discover that in that marriage, all that you thought about on your wedding day, all those things that were written, written the blessing of Abraham on the seed of Abraham has not been yours. No peace, no settlement, no love, and there is confusion. And you say, why couldn't we make up the home? You see, whatever questions we're asking, you should have done something, you are not able to do it. And you are asking, why couldn't we? The answer always is, because of your unbelief. And as you look at the people, the patriarchs and the prophets, all the people in the Bible days, and throughout the New Testament, and you begin to ask yourself, why couldn't they? There is only one answer. Because of their unbelief. God called Abraham and he said, I'll give you a child and through you all the families of the earth will be blessed. Why couldn't he wait for Isaac? Why did he have to take a detour, a side road, and be sidetracked so that he couldn't really wait for the time of God? The answer is because of his unbelief. You've read about Jacob, Esau, and their mother. And you've read about the scheme and the deceit that they planned. Now the question you're asking is, why couldn't they wait for the time of God? Why couldn't that mother leave everything in the hands of God? Why did they have to deceive? Why did they have to take a detour? Why did they have to go out of the way? The answer is because of their unbelief. And you have read about Laban. How he changed the way of ten times. And it couldn't really be straightforward. The question you are asking is, why couldn't that man be honest? Why couldn't he be straightforward? Why couldn't he keep to his word in honesty? Because of his unbelief. Because he didn't believe that if he kept to the word of God in total like that, that he'll be prospered. Haven't you read about the children of Israel? God said, I'm taking you out of the land of Egypt, out of this bondage and affliction, to a land flowing with milk and honey. And then they came out. They were all joyful when they came out. And eventually, we'll be reading the story in detail. They couldn't get there. The question is, why couldn't they? The answer still is, because of their unbelief. Haven't you read about Achan? Now they got into the land of Canaan. And they were told, now you are conquering this Jericho. Everything must be consecrated unto the Lord. As for prosperity, whatever the Lord will give everyone, he'll give you. At his own time, don't touch that thing. Don't take the accursed thing. Why couldn't he abide with that? Because of his unbelief. He didn't believe that God will prosper them. And now that he has seen this one, the wedge of gold and the goodly Babylonish garment, let me take this and help myself. And as we come on to the New Testament, many times Jesus told his own disciples, why is it ye of little faith? Why couldn't they be at peace on the stormy sea? Because of their unbelief. Why can't you be at peace within your stormy sea of persecution? Because of your unbelief. Why couldn't you stay at rest in your place of work when you have been dribbled here and there? Because of your unbelief. Why couldn't you remain in the Christian fold in all honesty without having to add anything to the word of God while they are threatening you that your work will have to go? Because of your unbelief. Why couldn't we stay at rest in the zone when this one is gossiping, that one is criticizing? Well, you said, if I don't defend myself, God will not defend me because of your unbelief. Many times he told them, why is it you have little faith? 
Why did you doubt? Peter had been walking on the sea. And then when he looked at the sea, at the waves, then he shook and he began to sink. And Jesus said, how is it that you doubted? You of little faith, why have you been sinking? Depressed, discouraged, and you couldn't really walk on the sea. And you couldn't walk in the straight path that God has set before you. The only answer is because of your unbelief. Why? Did those disciples, even after the death of Jesus Christ, after his resurrection, why did Peter say, I go a fishing? This ministry, this work of the Lord, I don't think this thing will work. I don't think this thing will continue. And the other people said, we go with you too. And all that night they caught nothing. And then Jesus came to them and said, children, have you any bread? Oh, they said, they had none. And he said, throw your net in that place. And they caught and they said, that must be the master. And they came and Jesus said, Peter, lovest thou me? Why couldn't he stay? Why did he go back to the fishing nets? Why couldn't he make up his mind and stay on the work of the Lord continuously, permanently, because of your unbelief? You'll meet backsliders on the street, in the bus, people who have been working for the Lord before. And you say, why couldn't you stay? They'll not give you this reason. They don't know this reason. They'll say, Zona leader offended me. That's why I left. That's not the reason. They'll say, the church was too hard on me. That's not the reason. They'll say, things were not going on with me. That's not the reason. They'll say, my people troubled me so much. They said, they didn't want me to remain a Christian. And if I remained a Christian, everybody re would reject me. That's not the reason. They will tell you, things were hard, nothing to eat. It appeared that the austerity was only in my family. No work, no money, no accommodation. And all those people in this zone, nobody cared for me. That's not the reason. There's only one reason. Why they couldn't stay. Why they had to backslide. Why they had to go back into the world. Because of their unbelief. We heard about Ananas and Sapphira. Now, the people have been given everything they had unto the Lord. They depended on, upon the promise of the Lord. Give, and it shall be given unto you. A good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Will men give into your bosom? Others were given, and so they made their own plan. They sold everything. And they said, let's uh, say for the rainy day. If we give everything to the Lord, what shall we have at a later time? So they brought half the price. And Peter said, is this everything? They said, yes, it's everything. Why is it you have lied unto the Holy Ghost? And that man died. And the wife came later. Tell me, is it true that this is how much you have sold the land? Oh, he said, yes. He said, why have you combined together in conspiracy to lie to the Holy Ghost? And she too died. Why did they die? Oh, because they were trying to be clever? No. Why did they die? Because they were trying to provide for their children. You know, after some time, that's not the reason. Why did they die? Because they were trying to be methodical. That's not the reason, because of their unbelief. They didn't believe God. They didn't believe the promises of God. Why have you lied? Why have you backslidden? Why have you brought half the price for the whole? Why are you trying to be clever? Why are you trying to be cunning? Why are you trying to deceive? Why are you trying to come to the church and telling the church, I'm all right, when you know that things are not all right? Well, you say, it's because, um, you know, I don't have all the wisdom. That's not the problem. You say, it is because I do not have the courage. That's not the problem. It's because of your unbelief. If you find people that backslide, people that go astray, if you find people that are not able to do what they ought to do in the house of the Lord, in the work of the Lord, there's only one reason. Because of your unbelief. And so they came to the Lord Jesus Christ and said, Lord, you did it. Why couldn't we? And he said, you couldn't because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, nothing shall be impossible unto you. You see, if you do not join those things together, you wouldn't have understood that the cause of any problem, every problem, is because of your unbelief. Why couldn't we? Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, nothing shall be impossible unto you. Here we have the goal set before us, the work that we have to do. In every house fellowship, we have found a lot of people. They started leading house fellowship when we started. But now, they are nowhere to be found. They said, I can't. Why couldn't you? 
I'm not educated. That's not the reason. Peter wasn't educated. They said, it's because I'm not uh, very, very forceful. That's not the reason. John, the beloved, was not very, very forceful. They said, it's because I'm a lady. That's not the reason, because the woman at the well was just a woman. Well, they said, it's because I'm just a mage, and uh, in the place I am, they are just, uh, you know, troubling me, and I couldn't serve the Lord at all. That's not the reason. The mage at uh, Naaman's house did everything the Lord wanted her to do. Oh, they said it's because of all my physical problems, because I, no money, no food, that's not the reason. All the disciples, 12 together, you know how much food they had? Five loaves of bread and two fishes, that's all they had. 12 big men with Jesus Christ, the 13th, to care for. So the problem and the reason is not all those things you have been given. The reason you started leading us fellowship, and then now we cannot find you there, is because of your unbelief. Sometimes you'll find some people in the church. They've been long in the church. And uh, you ask them, you say, Ah, sister, you are not working for the Lord again. Brother, you are not working for the Lord again. It's not my fault. It's pastor. Three years ago, pastors taught me. And since they taught me, he never called me back. Oh, you pity them. You say, oh, how, Why is pastor doing like this? How can pastor discipline somebody for three years and he has not called the person back? But that's not the reason. How can somebody be three years useless in the kingdom of God? It's because of their own belief. If they had faith, that mountain would have been removed. But no faith. Because of unbelief, they will hold, they would uh, put it on the head of the pastor. They will put it on the head of the zonal leader. They will put it on the head of the church. They will put it on the head of their cousin. They will put it on the head of uh, austerity. They will put it on the head of anything and anybody. But the reason is because of their unbelief. And in your own life, Whatever you see that God wants you to do, you have not been able to do. It's because of your own belief. Sister, I thought that you were going to be chosen as area leader. Oh, yes, I thought I would be area leader by now. And uh, what happened then? I went for interview. Those people, the problem is not me. It's not my own belief. Those people that interviewed me, they were hard. They were difficult. And uh, while they were hard and difficult, I just got angry with them. If they will not make me real, let, not, let them not make me real leader. I got angry with them. I told them, when did you come to church or interview me? I have been here before you. Let me tell you the truth. And it's okay, if you have been here before us, go and sit down. So they, they begin to go about, it's not my fault. I should have been area leader by now. I should have been zonal leader by now. But uh, it's those people that interviewed me is because of your own belief. Because if you have faith, as a grain of mustard seed. And what a shame that we cannot have faith as a grain of mustard seed. A grain of mustard seed. Not too much. Not too much. We can go out and sweat until we get a big car. We cannot go on our knees in our chamber until we get a grain of mustard seed faith. We can go out and sweat and go to university and get a degree. We cannot go on our knees in the chamber. And so it, we can get degree, we can get diploma, we cannot go on, on our face, before the Lord, and get a grain of mustard seed faith. And yet, the solution of your problem is not that big car. We can go out, we can write application, we can go to places of work and have interview, we can do everything and have a big job, and yet we cannot go on our knees and say, this grain of mustard seed faith, I must have it. I must have it. And go on our knees and have the grain of mustard seed. And we can do anything and everything. And get all these big, big things in the world. Get accommodation. Get wife. Get children. Get husband. Get certificate. Get work. Get everything. But the grain of mustard seed. Just a little thing. We cannot get. And Jesus said, the solution to your problem is not all the cast you get. The solution to your problem is not all the big things of this world you get. The solution to your problem is the smallest thing, the smallest of all seeds. Which one it is planted in the ground? It is smaller, it is the least of all seeds. But as it grows, it becometh a tree and stretches forth branches. And the birds of the air come to have their nest and the shelter and the food under it. And so, Jesus said, if you will have this grain of mustard seed faith, then nothing shall be impossible unto you. If I were you, I'll take time and get this faith. 
if I were you, I would take time. Because if I've seen that it is a lack of this grain of mustard seed faith that hindered all the people who have seen that were hindered in Bible days, if I were you, I will take time. I will take time. I'll go on my knees. I'll seek the face of the Lord. I'll lock up my door. I will say, Lord, this grain of mustard seed faith, you must give it unto me. Let's see some other people that failed because they couldn't have it. In Numbers chapter 13, from verse 1, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men, that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel, of every tribe of their fathers, shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Piran. All those men were heads of the children of Israel. They were just about to enter in now. The gates of the land of Canaan was open to them now. And the Lord knew within a few days they ought to enter. And so God said unto Moses, send them out. As you send them out, let them go and spy out the land, search out the land, survey the land. Let them see that it is flowing with milk and honey. And they've come out of Egypt so that they can get into that land. In verse 17. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, Get you up this way southward and go up into the mountain and see the land, what it is, and the people that dwelleth therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many. And in verse 21, So they went up and searched the land, surveyed the land, spied out the land, from the wilderness of Zin unto Reho, as men come to Hamath. In verse 25, and they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. Within 40 days, they had gone, they had come back. So it was not very, very far. Many of the things we're seeking for, they are not far. A man comes to the church and says, I'm, I'm looking for salvation. It's not far. And yet, this thing that is not far, that will take just a few minutes, just a few hours, it takes them two years, they are not free from sin. They have been coming now to the church, and they have been coming for two years. They're still fighting. And the thing is not far. Other people tell us they have been saved. They have been born again. They have given their lives to the Lord. And we tell them, just take a step. Sanctification is not far. And don't you see people, seven years they have been in the church, for the Adamic nature to be removed, for the root of sin to be removed, for the root of bitterness to be taken out, eradicated from them, for them to have the mind of Christ, the life of Christ, the very attitude of Christ. Seven years they have been praying. They say, I don't know why. I have not been sanctified yet. But the thing is not far. It's very near you there. There are people that have been sanctified and they have been saying, well, I want the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost. They pray for five minutes. They go to market. They come back and they say, I have not got Holy Ghost. They don't sell him in the market. You get him in the chamber. You get him on your knees. You get him when you're serious. When you wait in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. There are people that say, well, I've been baptized in the Holy Ghost, but I don't know why. I do not see the release of the power that will make me to do the work of God. How many of us are here this morning that will say, I've been baptized in the Holy Ghost, and yet all those people in the house fellowship, you never can pray for them, and one single prayer answered. And are you concerned? And are you bothered? And are you seeking the face of the Lord? Because to say you have been baptized in the Holy Ghost and the Bible says, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And all that those people do, they kneel down, they speak in tongues. All your speaking in tongues, where is the benefit? Well, the speaking in tongues, you read Bible, you cannot understand. And it says, when he, that spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. Then when situation comes, you cannot remember the word of God. It says he will bring to your remembrance all the things that are spoken unto you. It says when that spirit of truth has come, he is the comforter. Every time you are persecuted in your place of work, in your family, or even you are misunderstood in the church, no comfort. You are crying all about. Holy Ghost lady, Holy Ghost man, crying all about. Comforter is not there. Why don't you go back? And it is not far. That experience is not far from you. Just take a step and you have gone into that miracle, into that blessing. They, when they returned in 40 days, they had come back. The thing is not too far. It's very near to you. Any promise of God, all the success that we need. Now look at the work that God is doing in the church. Now, just 1983, we had one service. 
1984, we went to two services. And then 1985, we went to three services. 86, we had gone into four services. 87, we had gone into five services. And the thing is not far from anyone. And yet look at many pastors. They've gone to seminary. But the answer is not in the seminary. They've gone to theological school. But the answer is not in the theological school. And yet even though the success is not very far, They'll go to America, they'll go to Britain, they go all everywhere. Then when they come back, they're still where they were before. And you are the same person, you are the same thing in the zone. Since we started the zonal work, some zones have divided three times, four times, five times. Some zones are almost now a whole district. You know, we started at Jigunle. And that Ajigunle, with just a small number of people there, Ajigunle is very, very far from Bagada. And that uh, Ajegule zone divided, then divided, then divided, until now we are talking about Ajegule district. And many of those, uh, a number of those uh, zones now in Ajegule district, they are just the Ajegule zone before, and they are very, very far. And you zones that are very near, around the corner there. And you have been that zonal leader for a long, long time. Long, long time. We could almost call you Metusela now. But where is the growth of the work? And the thing is not far. Because those zonal leaders at Ajegule, you are coming to the same church. You are reading the same Bible. You are hearing the same doctrine. You are reading the same tract. You are listening to the same cassette. And you have the same God to call upon. Why is it they got it, you couldn't get it? Think about it. Why is it those people far, far away, they will take buses and buses and buses before they get to Bagada and they come. When we were here last week with Ajegule district, we didn't have a lot of cars. Those people, they are poor from Ajigunle district. And yet, see their faith. And yet, see their excitement in the word of God, in the work of God. And see how they are growing, how they are growing, how they are growing. And they have a lot of difficulties that I cannot have time to be telling you about now. And yet, the work is prospering. How is it? You have ability to own car. You have ability to have children. You have ability to have marriage. You have ability to build houses. You have ability to have all these other things. But the faith to do the work of God. The grain of mustard seed faith. That will make everything possible. You do not have it. How is it? You couldn't. You can't do the work of God. You can't succeed in the work of God. So yesterday afternoon, we were here with people from Sokoto State. They had been here since Thursday night, pastors of Deeper Life, because we had to have a meeting. And when we finished their meeting yesterday, it was uh, after we finished that you came in. And from mountain area, some of those places, they have to trek before they got there. Some of those villages, they do not understand their language. And yet, as they were here yesterday and were planning the work in the north from uh, Borno State, from Kano State, and those are the seeds of Islam from Sokoto State, the place of uh, the Sultan. And in all those places, as we were planning yesterday, uh, my faith was even increased while I was discussing with them. They never knew any impossibility. And I said, between now and 1990, now, you people in Sokoto State, you have this number of churches now. All the number of churches, they are going to multiply by three times. Oh, they said, we can go beyond that. And then I said, you, Bono State, now here is the level you are now. By 1990, this is where we, we ought to reach. I gave them a particular number. They said, I should add um, another number to it. They said, we can go beyond that. Then I called on the Kano State, and I said, Kano State, I know that things are difficult over there. Those Magusa people living on the mountainside, I know that things are difficult before you get to them, before you climb those uh, mountains and the cold and everything that I've read about. I, I said, I know that things are difficult. They smiled and said, with God, all things are possible. And then after we met together, then they distributed state by state, and they went to have their state meeting. When they came back, I didn't have any of them saying that goal is too, is, too, is too much for us. Let us decrease it a little. When they came back, they were telling me that by, uh, so one of them said by December, that's this December, part of that goal, we're going to reach this. By January, they already outlined everything. I said, how are these people far away from Lagos? 
coming from Kano, coming from Sokoto, coming from Borno, and coming from uh, Niger, coming from all these places. And when and they come to Lagos and I give them something for 10 minutes, they go to expand it, these people have faith. Why is it the people that are the source at the headquarters? You push them, they can't push. You draw them, they can't draw. You drive them, they can't drive. And you, you chase them, they are not chased. And you say, move, they are standing there. And you have to come and take a caterpillar to push them. Why? When these people that are coming from all these places, they are saying, we're going to take the land. We're going to take the land. I asked the brother in Sokoto, I said, with all these things that we're reading in the papers, that, uh, you know, when they put uh, the, um, the sultan there, the government said this is the one they wanted, and the natives said this is the one they wanted, and all those difficulties, I said, how about all that difficulty? Who oh, he said, there's no problem, the difficulty is that the church of God is marching on. None of them made application and said, we want to return back to the south because of the difficulty. And then yesterday, when we were talking, I said, uh, well, uh, when do we close today? Oh, they said, anytime we close, we'll still go. I said, we'll try to close in time. If we can close by 2 o'clock, so that because today is environmental, so that you'll go back in time. Oh, they said, anything you wanted to give us, everything you wanted to give us, give us. Anytime we finish, we'll be going back. Even if it's in the night, we'll sleep on the way, and then before Saturday, we'll get to Sokoto, and we'll have a workers' meeting. We're ready for Sunday. I said, ah, ah, these people, how do they have faith like this? Nothing discourages them. The distance from Sokoto, from Kano, from Bornu will not discourage them. How is it then that the people that are very close at the, at the foundation, at the headquarters, they are the people that you have to drag, you have to, you know, put their head down like little babies and then put the water or the pap in their mouth by force. You see, you are going to drink this thing. This water of faith, you will drink it. They will be crying, I don't want to drink it, Pastor. I don't want to drink it, Pastor. It is enough. We had it on Thursday. We had it last uh, Saturday. This is too much. I don't want to drink it. And Pastor, you will drink this one. How is it that the people that are far away, we don't force them. They just drink it and they say, yes, we want more, we want more. Let us wake up. Let us wake up. The thing is not far. Because 40 days they came back. But you know the story. A lot of them said we are not able. That we cannot do it. We cannot overcome. Let us look at that chapter 13. Verse 31. But the men that went up said... With him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Well, do you know they never made it? They died in the wilderness. But there was somebody who could make it. Look at verse 30. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. That's how those people, that's how Caleb and Joshua entered in. We are well able. We are well able. We're setting the goals. We're moving ahead. Actually, let me tell you, I've not told the other people, but let me tell you this. The reason we are divided into nine districts is that eventually, each district will have their own service, which means that we're dividing things up, and everything is being planned. Everything is being worked, worked out. For some weeks now, I've been busy just on the reorganization and on a lot of things that I've not told, not even the coordinators, the details of the things I have in mind. And the way it is being worked out now, you will have a whole service to yourself in the district. And when you do that, at the time you begin, you are going to find a lot of empty spaces. Those empty spaces are going to challenge your faith. And we're going to expect that, that your district, K2 district in particular, as we give you that service all alone to yourself, the empty spaces and the empty chairs will be staring us at the face. And every time we come to the church, those empty spaces will be telling us of your unbelief. And if you are able to fill that empty space, and we know that now this is your work, because you know the work we have been doing now, we have a lot of zones scattered all about coming to a particular service. And when there is no growth, when the work is not being achieved, we don't know it's responsible. So now we have done it in this way that we will give you a whole service to yourself separately. And eventually we will see at that time who are the people that will say, why couldn't we? We'll reply them, we'll remind them, we'll lend them the cassette and say, go and listen to this one because of your own belief. 
How many of you are believing God? I said, how many of you are believing God? Why not try up and tell the Lord? We have not been able to do a lot of things in the past because of our own belief. But now, where do we go? What shall we do now? Father, we magnify your name for this morning. We thank you very much for the power and the word of God. We give glory to your name because of this privilege and opportunity you have given us to be here this day. Father, I will worship you because we are living in this generation. We thank you very much because you have counted us to be worthy. Father, we glorify you. You have heard your word about faith that conquer. We want to conquer because you are the one who, has going to, who is going to make us to conquer. We have already conquered already. You conquered Satan on the cross of Calvary. And you said it is finished. Father, we are looking up to you. In this our district, we are asking, Lord, all the unbelief in the life of anybody, all the unbelief in the lives of the members of the church, all the unbelief in the lives of the leaders in this particular district, all the unbelief in the lives of the area leaders in this district, all the unbelief in the life of the zonal leaders in this district, all the unbelief in the life of the coordinator in this district. We can't swear the move in the name of Jesus. Amen. We saw Peter, he walked on water because he depended upon you. He had confidence in you. He trusted in you. He knew that he was able because we are very close to him. And we are able also. We are marching forward. We believe the gate of hell shall never, never prevail against your church. Father, we continue with you, Father. As we go on with you, we pray that none of us will ever sink in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, you have called us unto your work. And we are depending on you. Because we believe you are the one that's going to make us to march forward. Our zones have not been growing as before. Our areas have not been growing as we expected. Our house fellowships have not been growing as expected. But we are now calling you into this business. We are praying, Lord, as we leave this place, make us grow in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray, every one of us, fill us with your power. Amen. Fill us with your anointing. Amen. Fill us with everything that we need in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we are asking, as we leave this place, we want everybody to be motivated. Amen. As we are motivating us from here, we want all the members of the house fellowship to be motivated. Amen. And all those things that have been mitigating against the growth in this 